Welcome to In Detention. I'm your host, Sean Northgrave. Today we have a very special guest, ACT English teacher, Mr. Diamond. Mr. Diamond, everybody! Good to have you on the show. How are you, bud? Thanks for having me. Now, you are one of the younger teachers in this school. Yeah. What was it like transitioning from a student to a teacher? Uh, uh, it was actually easier than you think because all I have to do is not do the things I would do as a student. <laughs> so it's kind of like you just, uh, you kind of fake it a little bit. You know, like I kind of think the first year was what would an adult do in this situation and then do that. And then you just keep practicing before you know it and you're like a real adult and you wear a blazer and everything. <laughs> yeah, I really like the blazer by the way. Thank great, you. great choice. Thank you. Appreciate it. What got you into teaching exactly? Uh, I was a bad student. I was a really bad student. And uh, actually it was senior year. I mean, maybe you can, you know this, right? Yeah. Uh, Senior year was tough because you're ending something. You've been going to school for 12 years. Your life has been like a schedule, a routine. You get up, you do the yeah. same thing every day, and you start yeah. to resent it, and you hate it, and you drift off, and social life happens, and you know, school becomes secondary. At least that's what happened to me. Uh, and then all of a sudden, it was all ending, and I was like, holy crap, nobody told me that I had to put the brakes on and navigate all this emotional and actually practical stuff because nobody in my family comes to college. Yeah. Uh, and I just, when I finally figured it all out and got myself situated and got into school, I wanted to be a filmmaker, I wanted to go into fine arts majors, I was all over the place. Uh, and then I took a writing class and was like, I can do this, I've actually always been good at this. Maybe I should go back and help some of those kids that were like me when they were seniors yeah. and just lost in the world. Uh, and if English is easy, I'll just teach English. And, I mean, I always liked writing and yeah. reading, so it was just sort of like this epiphany moment where it was like all this, all this stuff sort of led up and then that was it. I just sort of did what I could to get in, into a school, and I uh, hit the jackpot. <laughs> talk, talk to us a little bit more about your high school years. Uh, I went to two high schools. Uh, I started high school, so I'm from Maywood, right? This is, listen to this. I'm from Maywood. Graduated eighth grade there, mm -hmm. and then I moved to Florida for my freshman year and oh, sophomore okay. year. And I went from like Bergen County, New Jersey, uh, to a rural, brand new high school in like coastal Florida. It was a total culture shock. Uh, and so I had no friends and I resented it and I thought they were all rednecks and you know, they didn't know how to dress and all this. Um, <laughs> so I was pretty introverted for the first two years of high school. And then of course, we moved back. Yeah. My wish came true. Junior year, I moved back and I walked into a high school where I'd kept in touch with my friends from Maywood. So I went to Hackensack High School for junior and yeah. senior year. And I walked into a high school where people knew who I was. I was walking down the school, down the hallway, and people were like, hey, you're Mickey, and I'm like, what? It was the weirdest thing. That was an awesome feeling. Yeah, yeah, for the first year, junior year, I thought I was the man, which is probably why senior year sucks so much. <laughs> um, so it was a weird, high, a weird experience, uh, really strange, which again, I think is why I became a teacher, because I know that there is no perfect, ideal high school experience. So mm. if nothing else, I could be there to tell somebody, hey, it's cool, it's supposed to be messy and <laughs> ugly and all that stuff. Nice. We'll be right back with more of Mr. Diamond right after this. Hello, I am Mr. Gonzalez, and you have been here with Mr. Sean Northgrave in detention. Welcome back. Still here with Mr. Diamond. Tell us about your most rewarding moment as a teacher. Uh, I think it was probably early on in my first year, I was trying to teach, uh, I was trying to teach like Showing versus telling, right? In English right. class, writing classes, right? It's more, it's more important to, to give the reader a sense of what they're looking at than to just tell them, like, there was a desk in the room. Like, tell the desk. Uh, and I had one student who was really quiet. She was okay, you know, in, in the class. She just didn't really seem very motivated. Um, and I remember sitting with her and explaining to her, like, the, the distinction between concrete and figurative language and, and how to really make a scene come to life. And she was into photography. And I explained, like, you don't just take a picture of, like, a a book, right? Like you have to go out and set up a scene and build it. Uh, and I just saw her light up and I, I could see her get it. And it was the first time and even I was like, I got chills, like I think I just taught somebody something. Yeah. Uh, and then she did it. She actually actually did it. Um, and she demonstrated that she understood it. So I was, I, I will probably never forget. I think that was my most rewarding teacher moment. There are other moments yeah. where like as a teacher, you, there are human moments, yeah. you know, like when you see that kid that, um, you know, wasn't going to do a thing and now does a thing or, or somebody comes to you and opens up and tells you something you didn't expect and 
those are rewarding. But th that's not teacher stuff. That's human stuff. Yeah. You know. I think uh, as students, that moment of where you go from just like this really tough thing that you don't really understand to the moment that you get it is the most rewarding moment yeah, for us too. Totally. So, what book was that? Uh, I don't remember what book we were reading. It was it was just a writing unit. Oh, okay. Um, I don't know that it was necessarily a book. It was probably, if anything, I'd probably give him some short stories or poetry, mm. um, but I can't recall what it is now. If you were to recommend a book to a student that was maybe struggling or maybe wanted to find their way, mm. what book would that be? That's a really difficult question. Uh, I, I, I tend to have no like historical memory when it comes to books that I've read. Yeah. Uh, there are big books that I feel like everybody should read, like 100 Years of Solitude, uh, Cannery Row, which is really accessible and beautiful and nuanced, but I think a book that I've read recently that I think lingers with a lot of students is uh, it's called Let the Great World Spin okay. and it's by a man named Colin McCann and it takes place in 1970s Manhattan when uh, I forget the, the gentleman's name but uh, uh, a guy walked a tightrope between the Twin Towers Oh, really? And it was this like cultural moment where everybody in the city is looking up at the towers, and you juxtapose that with the beginning of the book where he describes the towers falling, yeah. and that day when they're not there. And so that's how the book starts, and the rest of the book just goes from this tight wire walker down into all the little alleys and back alleys and little like the heart of Manhattan. Mm -hmm. I think it's great for especially for people around here to read because we, we all know the city. Yeah. Uh, and it's just a soaring, wonderful book. Thank you for that. One more question, then we'll get you out of here. Sure. How has the ACT culture affected you, and how do you affect the ACT culture? Uh, well, it's, it's an interesting question, because when I started, ACT was like an actual separate entity. It was yeah. this sort of pioneering project-based, I and mean, we didn't have bells. Um, <laughs> it, was a, it, it was a really interesting, nuanced thing. And then as, as we grew with it, the culture changed. And now, I don't really think of it as like ACT culture. I think of it, it's all, of high, it reminds me of all of high-tech culture. Mm. Um, but having gone into that flexibility early on and still sort of keeping that, that community nature, um, it's, it's impacted me because I have a sense of flexibility. Uh, I get to know the students because I have the same kids freshman and sophomore year. You get to know students in a way that I don't think you get to know. I mean, I have class, other classes that I only have for a year, and you get a little headway with them and you get to know people, but I mean, having a kid for two years, by the end of the second year, they know what I'm gonna say before I say yeah. it. You know, they know way too much about me <laughs> Uh, and vice versa. So, uh, yeah, I think those are the ways that they sort of go back and forth. Yeah, it's one of the best things over my four years at ITEC. You went from freshman year where it was really just like two separate beings to like sophomore year and junior year where we really became one and now we're here where it's basically the same thing. Yeah. 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 We want to thank you for coming on Thanks, today. Man. Thank you for tuning into In Detention this week. This has been Sean Northgrave with Mr. Diamond. <laughs> Hope you tune in next time. Thank you all for coming out. Okay, Two audience in five. Four, three, two.